Hey teachers, welcome back to the fifth and final part in our Zoom for Teachers series. Now being a classroom teacher is very different from being a virtual teacher. So in this video, I wanna share some helpful tips that I've learned over the years for how to have success with your Zoom meetings. Now my first Zoom teacher tip is make sure to take time to train your students. If you've tuned into any part of this video series, it's probably because you're not super familiar with Zoom and you don't know how to use it. Your students are going to be the exact same way, so I strongly encourage you, particularly in that very first meeting that you have with them, to take five to 10 minutes to show them how to use the features, model what it's like, um, tell them how they should behave in a Zoom classroom, answer any questions that they have, and then this is gonna take some repetition. So at least for the first week to two, week or two that you're using Zoom classrooms, make sure that you are taking time to reiterate what using it looks like and how they should act while it's going on. My second Zoom tip for teachers is one of the most important ones, and that is think about the way you are going to take questions. One of the first challenges I ever had when I was using Zoom to teach is I was teaching and I was getting all of these questions in the chat at the same time. And one, it was really distracting. And two, it was hard for me to both teach and answer the questions simultaneously. So I strongly recommend that you think about this situation and have a plan in place. You've got two options. In video two of this series, I showed you different tools that you can use during your meetings. And one of those is the raise hand tool. And with this tool, if students have a question, they can click the button. It will notify you that somebody has their hand raised, but you can wait till whenever you want to answer the question. So when you get to a good point to stop, you can pause and you can answer the question that that student has or that other students have. The other option is to make sure that students know right at the beginning of the lesson, please do not interrupt or ask questions until I say that it's time to ask questions. This is really the same way it is in the classroom because if you're teaching and kids are constantly interrupting you, you're gonna lose your train of thought and you're never gonna get through the content. So pause periodically and ask kids if they have questions. They can type their questions directly in the chat or they can let you know that they have a question in the chat and then you can share uh, your, your video with them and they can talk and interact with you. Next, make sure to mute the participants upon entry. In the first video, I showed you how to set up your Zoom meetings, and this is one that I cannot stress enough. When you're going through the settings, make sure to mute participants upon entry, um, and then remind students to keep their volume muted at all times unless you instruct them to unmute. Um, it's really distracting when you're teaching and somebody unmutes and you can hear them talking and interacting with their family in the background. It's one of the most distracting things, not just for you, but for all of the students in your class that are trying to learn. So make sure that you have everybody muted upon entry and then make sure your students also know how to mute themselves. Next up, make sure to record each of your meetings. This is a great tool because a student may not be able to attend live and you can send out the link to your meeting as soon as it's finished and they can either rewatch or if they miss the meeting, they can catch up. And last but not least, don't forget to take attendance. There is a button you can push in your meeting to see participants. I strongly recommend that at the start of each of your sessions, you click that button and take a minute just to take attendance. So that way you can keep track of who has been attending your live sessions and know who's been getting all of the material. If you notice that there are students that haven't been attending, you can reach out to them and kind of figure out what's going on and how you need to get them more involved. I hope all of the videos in this series have helped you to achieve the status of Zoom Teacher Rockstar. And I would love to hear from you. How are you using Zoom to engage and interact and teach your students? Leave a comment and let me know. And also, even though this Zoom series is ended, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel because I still have new videos coming out all the time with tech tips and helpful tips for teachers. And I don't want you to miss out on any of those. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. Happy teaching.